I think there were two big issues. One was what was going on in the, in the body politic, and I think we were beginning to see from the opinion polls that an outright victory for Mr Cameron and the Conservatives was going to be very difficult. It had always been that, simply because of the huge majorities that Mr Blair had built up before, before Gordon Brown took over. So there was something going on out there that was going to make the election of 2010 uh, the more interesting. And I think that there was within that a growing sense uh, in the electorate um, that, that they weren't simply going to take an old-fashioned campaign and leaders standing there and just handing out edicts, as it were. They wanted something different, something, something fresher. And the second thing was that when the debates were agreed, which I think in some respects were a reflection of that, that the leaders themselves knew they had to get out there and drill deeper down into, uh, into the, the mindset of the electorate, um, was this enormous responsibility that, that the BBC, ourselves, and Sky would have, because it was always going to have to be the three. There was no doubt about that. Uh, the fact that we went first was literally the luck of the draw. They yeah. drew out numbers, mm -hmm. and so that just added to the responsibility. So, yeah, you're absolutely right in the question. One, something very different and interesting was going on out there, mm -hmm. and secondly, suddenly we had this crucial role to play within it. I mean, the one thing I would say very much in Nick's defence, and indeed that of the Liberal Democrats, that the bulk of what they were saying in the 2010 election campaign, they had been saying for years and years and years, in the sense that you needed to have a reform of the way we do our politics. Mm -hmm. You needed to have reform of the House of Lords. You needed to have reform of the House of Commons. I mean, issues like expenses blew up when the mm -hmm. Daily Telegraph got the leak. Mm -hmm. but, but the Liberal Democrats were genuinely in a position to kind of say, well, there you are, told you so. Something needed to be different, even to the point of their long-standing demand that the way we vote Electoral reform then also became a key issue. So I think it's, it, I think it's hard and harsh to say that Nick cashed in on it. Mm. I think what he probably was able to do, which he did in the debates consistently, was to say, in effect, there we are, I told you so, there's something wrong. And if you want to change all of that, mm. then you've got to vote for us. And what he really, of course, wanted was a majority Liberal Democrat government. And statistically, that was never likely to happen. What he did end up with was fewer seats in the new House of Commons. He lost four seats overall, but was able to cut a deal with, with, uh, with David Cameron. Secondly, I think Cameron knew all along that, that change was the issue. And if you read his manifesto that came out in little book form and the idea of the big society uh, and a more concessionary approach, which was unusual for mm. the Conservatives, if you look back to Michael Howard and William yeah. Hague and Duncan Smith, um, he knew something was going on and that he had to play it quite carefully. And finally, Gordon Brown, I think, felt that he could only defend his position as being the safe pair of hands mm -hmm. that would get us out of the economic mess. What he couldn't concede and still doesn't was that, mm -hmm. you know, he contributed to that mess. And therefore, it was impossible for Gordon, as indeed it would have been for Tony Blair, to say, we're the party of change. And when there's an appetite for change in the country, you're going to lose. Curiously enough, the responsibility was awesome, uh, and just getting it right and not getting tongue-tied and not screwing up the rules of engagement uh, were, were the toughest challenges. So journalistically, the challenge was fairly modest because the questions were written by members of the public, the questions were asked by members of the public, the rules precluded my saying, well, hang on a minute, that's not what you said back in... 2008, uh, I wasn't allowed to do that. It would have been quite fun to do it, but, mm -hmm. but that was not the nature of the debate. The debate was simply to enable ordinary people to put ordinary questions, which I thought on reflection were very, very good questions. We selected the 10 from about 200. So there was a journalistic influence at that point, mm -hmm. but I think it was a fairly intelligent and balanced selection of questions. My biggest challenges were all logistical it was to make sure that these three big figures, um, all of whom I knew and all of whom I respected, uh, but, you know, they were... One was an outgoing Prime Minister and was still Prime Minister until he lost or won the election. The other two were the two who wanted to be Prime Minister, as it were. So big beasts to be dealing with. Um, and I had to keep them rigidly to one minute first time, one minute second time, and then four and a half, five minutes 
when it was open debate. And within that open debate, I also had to rigidly balance it mm -hmm. so we didn't get too much of Cameron or too much of Clegg or not enough of Brown. So it was a kind of timekeeping ringmaster mm -hmm. job um, uh, rather than a journalistic one. But, but that's quite an awesome challenge. Yeah. I think it is 99% certain mm -hmm. that we will have debates again before the 2015 election. Thank you for your time, Alistair. Entirely my pleasure and good luck.